Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to tell you the right way to insulate the slab underneath your home. It doesn't matter if you have a basement with a slab underneath it or it's a slab on grade home. The process is exactly the same. And the reason you want to do this is that slab, if left uninsulated, is going to be a significant heat loss source. So in your basement, let's say you haven't insulated anything. It generally accounts for one third of the heat loss in your entire home. So if you're building a new home, definitely insulate in that basement. I am a big proponent of ICF construction. I built my own ICF house and I definitely recommend it. But a lot of people will build a foundation wall and then set the ICF on top of it. I suggest taking that ICF all the way down to the footing, making that basement wall insulated as well. So that's step one. Then you definitely need to do the floor underneath it. The whole process actually starts when you're excavating for your basement. You're going to over dig actually a little bit and then you're probably going to dig out for your footings. Well, you want the top of your footing to actually be about, I would say at least six inches higher than what the dirt floor is for your basement. And the reason is you're going to fill that whole area with drainable rock. In my case, I use three quarter inch crushed stone, which is a great drainable rock. And then I used a product called Forma Drain on the outside perimeter drain, as well as an inside perimeter drain. You don't want to forget about that inside perimeter drain. If water was to get inside of your home, it needs a place to go. It doesn't need to get trapped underneath that slab. I bought the Forma Drain from Menards and it acts as the form for my uh, footing, as well as the perimeter drain and of course you know because it's that form you set it up just dead level it's not going to sag over time so it is a really really good product I definitely recommend it if you couple that form a drain with that three quarter inch drainable rock I use that rock on the outside of my foundation as well as of course on the basement floor before I poured any slab it gives you a fantastic system that effectively drains the outside of your foundation as well as the inside. Now I'm going to take you into my basement and show you exactly what I did. The first tip I can give you is to pick a day where there is very, very little wind. To do what I'm about to show you with wind is about impossible. All right, so here's my ICF walls and we're going to say right here, this is my footing right here. And then just imagine out in this area is all of the rock. Everything is level at this point. Next, you're going to take whatever your insulation is. So this is uh, a foam insulation and it is rated for under slab uh, use. And that's very important. You want to make sure that you have a insulation that is rated for at least 25 PSI. And it's usually going to be the pink or the blue, but I have seen some of the white insulation, the foam white insulation that is also rated for this. So make sure you pick the correct insulation. I used one inch foam underneath my slab, which gives me an R5. Honestly, I wish I had used more, probably more like a two inch foam. Uh, just would have given me a little bit more, but that's what we could afford. Regardless, just go with whatever you can afford and go from there. It's going to have a, a tongue and groove, and so it's important that you engage those pieces whenever you can. All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it exactly against this ICF wall. The whole purpose here is to create an envelope all the way through. So the ICF needs to have contact with this foam board, and that gives you that envelope. As you put these pieces down, wherever there's joints, you're going to use a tape that looks like this. And you can get it at any of your home stores. It's kind of an opaque red, at least in my case, but I taped up every single seam. So this is the first thing you're going to put down. Then you're going to tape it all up and it's going to act a bit like a vapor barrier in this sense. But once you get this down, you're going to put your vapor barrier on top of it. So the next step is the vapor barrier and you want to get it into that corner there and you actually want to overlap onto your wall. I would say up at least a foot. Uh, just tape it to the wall and you'll be good to go. Your 
Barrier should be at least a six mil. That's generally what the, the minimum standard is. You can go with a 10 mil or you know basically anything that is thicker. As I mentioned before, the wind really needs to be very calm. It can get underneath this plastic or it can get underneath this foam and just blow it all up. So make sure that it's a very non-windy day and then your rebar or your remesh sits on top of everything and actually provides the weight that you need to hold this whole thing down. The reason you don't put your foam on top of your vapor barrier is because if you're pouring that concrete and the concrete gets underneath this, uh, this foam at any point, it can actually float it and then you're just stuck at that point. So that's the very important part of having it right underneath that plastic. That plastic's gonna be a nice giant huge sheet and the chances of you getting anything underneath it are very, very small. Plus, if you have joints in that plastic, you're gonna tape them up as well, just so you have a better vapor barrier. Make sure you overlap by at least a couple feet that vapor barrier as well. Like I said before, it's really about creating an insulation envelope around your house. Most people forget about the floor and you know you can have a whole lot of loss in that section. So make sure you at least put something. Even in my case, I only put a one inch, which is an R5, and it is way better than absolutely nothing. And I can tell you with my ICF house, coupled with that foam underneath the slab, my basement temperature is very, very consistent with the main level. There is very, very little difference between the temperature on the main level as well as the basement. And that is indicative of a well insulated basement. I'm sure you guys have gone into old homes and then go into the basement, especially during the summertime, and it's like a 10 degree drop in temperature down there. That is because it is uninsulated. My house does not act like that, and a house really shouldn't act like that. So make sure you insulate everything correctly, and make sure everything butts. Like I said, it's an envelope. You need that all the way around from the floor to the walls to the ceiling up above. I hope this is helpful in your new build. Make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.